Chapter 10 Brady, stop! Dad hollered. But by the time he saw me dumping the crabs, there were only two bushels left. What the hell you doing? He demanded, seizing my wrist with one hand and the basket with his other. I couldn't look at him. Brady! All I felt left was empty inside, empty and removed, as though it wasn't even me who was standing there. What's going on? He shouted at me. I cringed, but I couldn't answer. Disgusted, Dad threw down my hand and kicked the last two baskets up toward the front of the boat. I heard him cuss under his breath, but then nothing more. Silence as we rowed home on the boat. Neither Mom nor Dad knew what to say or how to start a conversation with me. So I went to my room, down the hall, and listened to my parents touch voices. Off the deep end? I don't know. For crying out loud. But I'm worried, Tom. Then I heard my mother call Carl and ask him to come over. I waited inside my door, biting my thumbnail. It hit me then how my parents couldn't talk to me. It's like they wanted to help, but they didn't know how. When Mom finished and hung up the phone, I heard her say that Carl had to be in Easton for a meeting, but then he'd stop by on the way. I was relieved Carl was coming. I changed and waited for him in the kitchen. When, it, when he came in, he had my parka, the one I wrapped around Ben. My mother took it and gave Carl back the jacket the police officer had lent me. It occurred to me sh she must have quietly, quietly gotten rid of Ben's jacket too. That and his life jacket. I hadn't seen them around the house. Carl and I pulled out the chairs at the kitchen table. We're going out to get pizza. Mom said as she and my father came through the room. We'll bring it back, Carl, if you want to stay and eat with us. Thanks, I'm all set, Kyle replied. Mom picked up her purse as Dad put his cap on and opened the door for her. I thought how easy he'd been on me considering what, he'd do what I had done. All that work and he'd brought home a measly two bushels. I began to feel unbelievably stupid and ungrateful for doing that to him, to us. What I did affected the whole family. After my parents were gone, Carl unzipped his brown leather jacket and rested his strong arms on the table. He seemed just a bit uncomfortable, but I was sure he would say the right thing. Carl, Carl is one smart person, and he's got a good heart, too. If anyone had the answer, it was him. I remember once when Carl worked with, with a toll facilities police, how he had stopped a woman from jumping off the chesapeake bay bridge just by talking to her he would never t tell me exactly what he said none of the guys are supposed to talk about it but whatever it was it must have been good so i listened up even if i didn't look up Carl pressed his thick fingers together you know he finally began every time we get a call brady a car accident or a hunting incident and somebody dies at the scene it's very distressing to us i lifted my eyes even though we knew, knew, even though we know someone has died, keep going back. We keep going back to recheck, to make th sure the person has, you know, passed on. It's a little like we can't quite believe it. He shrugged. Can't quite accept it, because see, he opened his hands. Here we have all this training, all this skill. Sometimes it's simply too late, or for some reason it wasn't meant to be. It wasn't necessarily our fault. Because we didn't get in, get there in time. Carl paused. In the end, there isn't anything more we can do. We need to put it behind us. So we can move on to the next one. If we didn't, we would be totally burned out. You need to do the same thing, Brady. He said, waiting until our eyes connected. You need to talk it out. People have these feelings, you know. You need to talk it out and put it behind you. So that you can move on. I looked away again, but I knew Carl needed me to respond. Little nod was all I could manage. I didn't know how to express what I was feeling, which as far as I could tell then was a combination of guilt for what I hadn't done, anger because of what did happen, and enormous sadness for Ben and his family. Maybe that's what I should have told him. It took me a while, but I was getting my thoughts together when Carl stood up. He shouldn't have stood up. 
Another few seconds, maybe, I could have gotten something out. You sure you don't want to talk about it? He asked. It was obvious he needed to get going, because he glanced at his watch. I nodded again. I didn't want to hold him back. Look, I gotta run, Brady, but if you change your mind and want to talk, give me a holler. You know where I am. I stared at the table, disappointed, while Carl zipped up his jacket. Wait, I said when Carl reached the door handle, because there was one thing I had to know. He turned around. I just what wondered what happened. I mean, why did Ben die? I felt my voice quaver. I thought you guys had a pulse. Carl came back to the table and sat down. He forced me to, to look at him. We did have a pulse, Brady. There's no question you brought him back. I swallowed hard. I hoped Carl wouldn't think less of me f for getting tears in my eyes. But he had done. He, but he had a lot of water in his lungs, and it gave him pneumonia, what they call aspiration pneumonia. Carl explained. That's on the. That's on top of the exposure. It was too much. I dropped my eyes again and was trying to trying real hard to hold everything in. Carl cleared his throat a little. He went fast, they tell me. Kids, when they go down, they go fast. I wiped my eyes with the heel of my hand. Don't beat yourself, Brady, Carl said. You did a great thing. You tried. You give it your best and that's what matters. Carl ended up staying until my parents came back with the pizza. But they needed left. Mom and Dad still seemed worried about me. Dad even said I could hang out at home again the next day if I wanted. But I guess the talk with Carl did a, me a little good after all because what I said was, Thanks, but it's time to move on. I tried. I tried the best I could. In my room, I put away the bag of Legos and slid my heavy backpack over to my desk. I took a shower, reviewed material for, for social studies, exam I had missed, and hung a clean shirt on the on the drawer pulled up my bureau. But at school the next day, I couldn't seem to pick up where I left off. I knew I avoided looking at people. I just wanted to be invisible. But I couldn't because a lot of kids came came up to me and said they were sorry and it's and it's too bad what about what happened. They were just being nice, I know. But I couldn't think of what to say back. Plus, I didn't feel as though I belonged in, in school that day. Everyone else was in a good mood because of being Friday and spring break was the following week. But I just wanted to find JT. Then I wanted to be left alone. I waited for JT at his locker during six during six minute break, but he never showed up. So I went to social studies by myself, knowing I'd see him there in class. I was supposed to sleep over at JT's house that night. Only I was thinking of backing out on him because I wasn't up for it. Then again, I thought it might be good to watch a movie and play a bunch of video games and stuff. I didn't know. I was mixed up. So when I finally saw JT come through the door, I was relieved. <clears throat> hey, I, hey, I said when JT took the seat beside me where he always sits. How are you doing? He replied. Not so good, I replied, rolling my eyes. It's been really awful. JT nodded. I'll bet. I thought he was going to say something else, but he didn't. He sort of paused, then reached into his backpack and pulled the book onto his desk. He started looking through it, like he was searching for homework or something. But we, we didn't have any of that that I knew of. JT, I said. About tonight. Tonight? Yeah, you wanted me to come over, remember? Oh, gee, he replied, before getting this weird look. Like he remembered something. Tonight? Brady, I don't think we can do it. No big deal, I said, trying to make a light of it. After all, I was relieved. Wasn't I? We've got all of next week off, I said. We can do something later. JT shot a quick glance at me. Actually, we won't be home. We're going to down to North Carolina. To visit my aunt and uncle. I stared at him because JT's family ever went anywhere on account of their chicken farm. He must have known what I was thinking. My dad's not going. Just then, our teacher, Miss Figley, came into the room and loudly closed the door so we'd all shut up. After class, I spoke briefly, briefly with Mr. Figley about making up the test I'd missed, and I tried to catch up with JT just before the walk downstairs. 
He went to Spanish, and I went to math. But he had slipped into the crowd and disappeared. Later, in the hall between third and fourth periods, I saw Digger. I knew he saw me, because I watched him do a double take and then turn a complete 180. Then back in my locker, where I stopped to switch books, Katie came, Kate came up to me. She was still on crutches because of her ankle, so her, so her girlfriend, Ryan, carried her backpack. Sorry about Ben, she said. Me too. It's really sad, Ryan added. Thanks, I muttered. Kate had her brown hair pulled, ba pulled up and back into two ponytails, like a little kid. But it was cute. When I bent down to pick up my book, she said, I guess I'll see you tonight. Mom said you were coming over. Surprised, I straightened up. I thought you were going to North Carolina. Kate's eyes widened. What are you talking about? JT said, then it hit me fast. JT had made the story up because he didn't want me over. I'm confused, I mumbled, scrambling to figure out why. I guess I got it mixed up. Ryan was nudging Kate. Yeah, we have to go, Kate said. See you, see you Brady. See ya, I said. But as she hobbled away with Ryan, I stood there wondering, why would JT lie to me? And why would Digger not even want to talk to me? I needed to get to class. Locker slam. Everyone's hustling. Ernie Bodkin knocked my shoulder as he rushed by. But I stood there, staring. I didn't get it. The bell rang. I was going to be late. But I didn't much care because I didn't get it.